White Sox Podcast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app today and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome into Studio A of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm Sean Anderson, the host of the CHGO White Sox Show. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Alongside me is the full CHGO White Sox crew back from Austin. Oh, I was going to do it. See? It begins with an A. As I tweeted earlier, Sean, uh, being back from Australia is so 2022. <laughs> I'm moved on to a new year. I'm now back from Arizona. That's what all the cool kids are these days. So get with the times. Yes, back from Arizona. Says the guy in the cheap trick shirt. Get with the times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back from Arizona, Vinny Duber. You can follow him on Twitter, at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer, as he just said. Uh, was down in Arizona for about, what, a week and a half? Yeah, almost two weeks, yeah. Two weeks or so. Uh, put out a ton of great material and came back with more. Uh, we got Andrew Vaughn uh, as the interview guest today. So, you know, the keep the hits keep coming and they won't stop. Did you see that last uh, Saturday? Was that uh, was Smash Mouth playing at your concert? No, was it just Smash Mouth, Smash Mouth was not. Just no. cool 90s bands. It was, uh, you know, I, I keep saying party like it's 1994. So that's just a little early for Smash Mouth. Yeah, I saw, saw Weezer. Saw so, uh, the Black Crows, one of my all-time faves, and uh, Green Day, of course, one of the one of the best bands ever. Uh, they put on a hell of a show too. Green Day does. Still? I would I would recommend when it comes to a recommendation to go see a, a band live, I would I would put them up there with just about anybody I've ever seen. Did they do Hitch and a Ride? They did, and it was probably the highlight of the show. I do, in love my Hitch opinion, and yes. Really. Is that an actual Green Day song or Hitching a Ride? The yeah, it's a song. Hitching a Ride. Hitching a Ride. It's, it's, on, it's on Nimrod. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. Hey, there Are you go. You That's Herb Lawrence. Her He's Hello. from 1994. I am. Were you about was, to sing it, Kevin? I was alive. Yeah, he did. He, he, gave a, he sang a few bars. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean probably <laughs> people, that, people who were watching heard it. The dulcet tones of Kevin. Over there. <laughs> Kay Wells. Uh, but that's her, Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter, at Roll 23 is our CHGO White Sox community leader. Um, I guess I probably should have just introduced you guys before starting banter. It's uh, okay. That's on me. And that's Kevin Wells. You could hear him singing, uh, I guess, later on in the show. Like, do you know any Weezer? I'm not a huge Weezer fan. I'm a huge Green Day fan, Say though, it ain't so. so. That was played. The Weezer set list was Say very good. It ain't so See, he knows. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There, yes. were, there were some sound <laughs> issues during the Weezer set, though, which kind of... Marred it a little bit. But was yeah. it 94 the Blue Album? Or was yeah, that's their first one. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. when was Pinkerton? 96? 96, yes. Okay. I think I'm more of a Pinkerton person. but I, I They're both great. I don't know. They, They're they both are great. both great. I've got them uh, both on vinyl. There you go. Color vinyl, too. Did, they, did, they, did that originally release on vinyl? Was 94 still vinyl? I don't think so. We didn't, no. you know, yeah. We were into CDs at that time. <laughs> yeah, who's, so, you, I mean, your re- one recommendation would be go see Green Day in concert? Like, that's I'm one just saying band. they were that awesome. Okay. They, put, they put on a phenomenal... Phenomenal show. If you had great. to give one band the Vinnie Duber seal of approval, if you had to give the Herb Lawrence seal of approval to one band and one band only that you have seen, mm-hmm. who would it be? My band would be, I think your band is U2. I've seen them twice and both times. High energy, knew all the songs. Everything was great. The best song they sing is Bad. Bad Live That's is true. just, it's undefeated. Insane. I mean, I, that's not my band. Um, mm-hmm. It's one of my bands, bands I've seen the most, but I'd still have to say yeah. Springsteen. Well, I'll say this. If, if you're going in 2023, that's what you're asking, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what, 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 what's your answer for 2023? And what, I mean, because you two still rock. Because Spring, the Springsteen show is, you know, you got to go see Bruce. That's f- fantastic. Right. But I've been seeing some pictures from the new tour that's going on. Oh? And he is looking old. I'll oh. tell you that much. <laughs> um, I hear. I hear it's still good, but he's. he's I heard it's only he's three looking, hours. He's now. looking his age. Um, yeah, Green Day's right up there, and then this one's probably a band that not a lot of people know, but I've seen him a couple times. Tremendous show. Uh, Low Cut Connie, uh, yeah. one of my one of my favorite kind of current quote unquote current bands, uh, and they they put on a, a wonderful a wonderful performance. Where have you seen them? Saw so them at Beat Kitchen and Thalia Hall. Okay, I've been to Thalia Hall. I like Thalia Hall. I've never been to Beat Kitchen. I'm going to uh, Sleeping Village tomorrow. Ah, that's a good one. I got uh, Serengeti, the guy we uh, yes. kicked his ass in softball. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go watch him perform. All right. <laughs> Our boy, Dad. Nice. You're going to yell, throw strikes all the whole damn time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask him about uh, what he thinks about walks in 16-inch. And uh, he'll probably go on a little bit Tell of a Tell me rant. from 670 score. He'll hate you immediately. <laughs> like, I know we're not from 670 score, but that's where we met Dave Serengeti. And he was not too happy that we were not swinging the bat. I was like, throw some damn strikes, yeah, Serengeti. Throw me a strike then. Well, that was our first, our first win. Our first playoff yeah. win was against Chirp, and we kicked his ass. So I guess I could just say he'll remember us putting up 18 Bring that ball. Him. 
<laughs> yeah, right. I'll bring the ball home. <laughs> Let him sign it. Uh, but yeah, uh, Evan Kevin says, uh, my morning jacket. Uh, Matthew McGrory saying, uh, pa- Paul McCartney. I've seen him twice. Um, that was fun. Maka? And Lala. Yeah, Maka. And then Lala. And then the uh, the world, as you guys probably know, because you're old. But yes. Tinley Park. Do you call I'm the not world? That old. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody I know that's older than me is like, oh, the world it's is the great. The world, the Tweeter Center. Yeah, the tweet there. That's what it was when I was young. The Tweeter Center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not just. Does that company even exist anymore? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Tweeter. <laughs> they were car speaker or car stereos, yeah. right? Yeah. Probably spent all their money on advertising for the world. Uh huh. <laughs> the, the dude that's got con played in uh, Varsity Blues came up when I tweeted up Tweeter. <laughs> that's D. Tweeter with a T. Two oh. T's. Yeah. Oh, like tweeter. tweeter. Like when you go on, like Twitter. when you send a tweet, oh. you're a tweeter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. The tweeter center. Yeah, I don't. I don't Before like Twitter. All right. Anyways, uh, welcome into the CHGO White Sox <laughs> podcast. Uh, they got, are here for that too. Yeah. We got Andrew Vaughn <laughs> to talk about. It is spring training, so we're going at more of a relaxed pace. And hey, the White Sox are cruising. Uh, it is six to one right now uh, at the top of the eighth inning. Uh, we've seen another home run from Jake Berger. Uh, I think that's the the hot topic right now. I didn't put this on the rundown here, but um, we talked a little bit about the uh, Gavin Sheets, Oscar Colas platoon. Um, I mean, could Jake Berger hit his way onto onto this lineup? I know we talked no. about uh, it was the uh, uh, obviously the um, now I'm blanking, Mike Rodolfo and Yolki Cespeda show last year in spring training. But Jake Berger is a guy that's had double digits home home runs before in spring training. I don't or, think uh, in, in in a regular season before. I listen. Jake Berger, great guy and great hitter. I don't think the White Sox needed uh, three Cactus League games to know that Jake Berger can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Right. They knew that already, and it's a very valuable uh, skill set for this team. But guess what? They got nowhere to put him. Uh, I mean, people spent all year last year complaining about how they had so many guys who could hit and could, you know, theoretically hit for power mm-hmm. and had nowhere to play on the field. Jake Berger is probably the definition of that guy right now, considering uh, you know his his defensive struggles at times during the season last year at the position that is his position, right? And so um, I think the hope is that he just continues to mash in AAA, and and maybe maybe you know he gets an opportunity when there is an you know an inevitable injury of some kind. But I think the idea right now is just the guys who are in front of him on the depth chart are just blocking him at every position. You're not going to give him playing time over Andrew Vaughn. You're not going to give him playing time over Yoan Moncada. To, um, you know, or, or or whoever you got ending well, up at DH, right? So I mean, really the the quote unquote best case scenario for for Jake Berger right now would be Colas stinking it up. Uh, Aloy, Aloy to right goes fielder, to right, right field, and then it's kind of him and Sheets as your as your DH a platoon, I guess. Kind of that's really the best case scenario for him. But I just really don't, I, I really don't see a spot for him. I mean, you you brought it up. You know, last year was I think a perfect example of how spring training the results don't matter. Uh, you know, Mike Rodolfo, Yoelki Cespedes, obviously Cespedes a, a little less experienced. He probably wasn't going to make the team just because they needed him to play more games in the minor leagues at various levels. But Mike Rodolfo had been around in the minor leagues for a while, uh, and and they just were they were just not sold, yeah. c- considering the the roster that they had. As Vinny said, like it would take injury or bad play from somebody else for Jake Berger to make this team. Now, he can come up in the middle of the year if somebody's hurt or struggling, but I don't see him breaking camp with this team, and especially we talked about yesterday. These results don't matter. To me, they don't matter. I'm sure the White Sox, they really don't matter either. Just getting your work in is what the thing is. They like to see the rocket home runs, and as Vinny said, they knew that was part of his game. Can you glove it at third base? Are you improved there? Even if you are, we got a better guy for that for that position, yeah, Yohan Mankata. Go ahead. Do your first base stuff like you did on Sunday. Hit home runs. Keep on doing what you're doing. But mostly you're going to be a AAA or on somebody else's team, which I'm sure they're not you know, wanting him to be on another team because he's a Major League Baseball player at the very least. So you can use those players uh, at minimum, and they still have them for years on end. So there's no re- need to trade them or to get them on somebody else's team right now. So he'll just be in AAA for the time being. And I'm not saying you know anybody should be just happy to be here, but – Think about it for a while. Take a step back and realize how impressive it is that we're even having this conversation about Jake Berger, Absolutely. given the injury history that he's had. And, and you know, I think basically, listen, when you sit, tear the same Achilles twice, I think uh, everybody kind of just goes, "All right, you know, you're you're the the first round pick that didn't pan out," kind of thing. And I think, you know, obviously he doesn't have a lot of major league experience to this point, but uh, that we're having this conversation uh, shows that he has at least made a way toward panning out. Yeah. A- absolutely, and he's been huge on his uh, mental health advocacy as well, mm-hmm. and he's just been a fantastic uh, 
person in, in the White Sox organization just to follow. Um, definitely a person to root for. The one thing, too, though, it, it, it does feel like a, he has more experience. I thought he had um, 10 home runs in a season, but he's, he has nine for his career. Am I, what am I, why do I feel like uh, <laughs> we've, we've known Jake well, Berger for a little bit longer? I mean, we've known the player because he was drafted first in the first round, and then he had those two injuries. We've known and we've heard about right. Jake Berger for a long time. But remember the pandemic season? No one played. He was t- probably down there. Schomburg, Vinny would tell you more about that. In 2001, he came up, I think, for a cup of coffee and did his thing yeah, for one home games. runs and then eight home runs last year. So, yeah, we've known the name and thought, you know, before the two injuries that he was going to be on the team in 2022 as a full-time starter. But, you know, injuries happen. The fact that he is on a major league team right now is amazing that he didn't give up playing. Remember in 2020, he went to play for an independent team via the White Sox allowing him to do that just so he can play games. You know, that is a – a testament to him, and as you said, he's a great personality. Whenever you get to see him or his wife or his child on the social medias, it's like so heart heartwarming. I'm rooting for the man, but we know that he's not going to be on this team unless something else happens to one of the starters, or because he's not going to play his way onto the White Sox. That's what I'm saying. Because too many people in front of him. But hey, Sean, you always bring up depth, right? And I mean, right. it, it it doesn't. It, there are not a lot of places on this in this organization where you look around and say, boy, if player X at the major league level gets hurt, you know, you're confident in bringing up somebody to replace them. Jake Berger is a guy who you would be confident to stick in that lineup. Maybe not, maybe not in the field, but you'd be confident to stick in the lineup in the event of an injury, even if it's just for a 10 game stretch in, in May or a 10 game stretch in August, right? April 7th, AJ Pollock gets hurt. Who's the first person the White Sox call up last year, last year, well, Jake Berger, Jake Berger. He, he came up for uh, Detroit. So I think it's funny that you, you mentioned that. Cause that, absolutely. Um, you know, that, that seems like the, the spot that he is, he's a very, I mean, it's the bat that plays. Um, and you know, who's your daddy? Who's, uh, and I'm mainly bringing this up cause our, our discord people are just like Jake Berger, Jake Berger, Jake Berger. Um, I think his first home run was against the Astros, and that counts for like 100 home runs in my heart. Um, so I think that was the reason why it felt like he had 10 home runs. Um, but yeah, only nine for his career. Uh, but who's your daddy saying, don't compare Berger to Adolfo? Again, he has had major league success. He's also had a lot of major league failures, and specifically defensively. I mean, we always just joked about a Jake Berger game was make an error at third base and then hit a home run at Immediately. home. Immediately. Um, and then, yeah, like he, he had a pretty good a way to make up for himself, but there's, there's some flaws in his game, and that's why even when when Ian Robo in our Discord says, oh, you know, is anyone looking for a DH? The White Sox should trade for him. It feels like the White Sox have been kind of looking for a trade partner to dance with a Jake Berger or a Gavin Sheets, possibly, and it seems like that deal has never come to fruition. And What are you really you know, getting back from for a Jake Berger? Right. Well, I think, you know, the White Sox, again, they see the yeah. first the first over, the first first round talent, the, the pedigree. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they probably think a little bit higher of Jake Berger than, you know, other, other organizations do, and that's why the a deal hasn't been met. Yeah, and it's always good to have, as Vinny said, that player on your team that you know is a major league player just, you know, can't pick up the ball as consistently as you want him to. But as soon as Yoan gets hurt or if Andrew Vaughn gets hurt or if Aloy gets hurt, Jake Berger is probably the first person I'm calling on for the major league roster. Maybe not even to start, just to be there as a competent major league bat that you know can run into one. Ninth inning, if you have a guy like, uh, I don't know. Now it's kind of messed up. If you had Romy Gonzalez back in the day when we didn't have Alessandros, you would rather have Jake Berger coming on the ninth inning. You're down one. You can have one knocked out. And, yes, he would have to play second subsequently. But you know what? I'll take that chance of him hitting that home run. So it's good to have a player of his caliber on the squad, no matter if he makes the team or not. Keep on right, raking, Jake. And maybe some other team comes calling and says, hey, we're going to offer you something that you find of value. But I, it would take a lot for the White Sox to move from Jake Berger, I would think. Because he has great talent. And I yeah, think he's, in this league, he will hit 20 home runs if given the chance. Well, minimum. We'll be 27 on April 10th. I was just going to say, uh, ap- ap- apologies if there were any crossed wires there. I was bringing up Mike Rodolfo's name as someone who tore up spring training a oh, year yeah, ago. Yeah. No, no. And, and and maybe Jake Berger is going to be that guy this year. He's already got a couple home runs in just a few games. I, and, and the point being, though, it never really seemed like Mike Rodolfo had a shot at making the team as great a success as he was having in Cactus League. If Jake Berger has a great Cactus League, I also don't think he has much shot of making that opening day roster unless there's an injury. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, yeah, I, that's what I, – I, leading off the conversation, you know, I think you were just going off of the point that I said. It was, it was Yoki Cespedes and, you know, Mike Rodolfo who, who were consistently um, stealing those early uh, early um, 
spring training headlines, but you know, it really didn't turn into much. Uh, is Mike Rodolfo even in the organization anymore? I don't think no. so. Yeah, I don't believe um, so. And we haven't even seen or heard much from Yolki, um, and it's been you know six. Saw him. Uh, saw him. He's at spring training. Saw him. Um, I, don't, I don't think he's had an at bat yet. Um, but yeah, uh, even with Berger too, like it is a little bit different. And Yusespas has had an at bat. He, he was in the Angels game. Um, but the one thing that's different about Berger, and you even saw it during his offseason work, um, he was with his. Uh, Bledsoe agency down in Texas, um, using a Rapsodo. His max exit velocity was 114.3. Um, and you even see last year uh, a max exit velocity of 114, max exit velocity of 113, 111, 111, 110, 110. So what, that's six batted ball events over 110? Like, when he gets a hold of one, he gets a hold of one, right? It, it looks like there's a major league player in there. So, I, again, I, I don't think it's a bad thing to have those guys in your organization. When Herb sees Zach Remillard's stats from Charlotte and is like, oh, why didn't this guy get a shot? I'm like, no, like, Herb, like, you're just a White Sox fan that doesn't know anything good. Jake Berger might be something that's uh, a little bit more palatable uh, for, for depth. And, by the way, I'm looking at Michael Rodolfo's page. It says he's still a free agent. I'm sure he got an invite to some camp, but I do not see that anywhere. So he chose free agency at the end of the year, and I don't see him anywhere else. He's looking for a starting job. Um, and maybe, maybe he goes back um, to the DR and, you know, finds a spot there. Or, um you know, maybe he goes to Mexican Winter League. I mean, he's got a ton of power that could work over Japan. We've seen guys like uh, Eric Thames go over there and just maul so, or, or mash. Maybe uh, maybe that ends happening. Let's take a break, and then let's get to our guy, Andrew Vaughn, who is going to play 162 games in 2023. We'll they talk. all want to, Sean. On the oh, show, yeah. <laughs> we'll <laughs> talk about yeah, 162 it. 162 on the game. <laughs> we'll turn off injuries for him. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know about DraftKings Sportsbook first. Uh Tomorrow, the Bulls will be playing, so make sure when, you know, I mean, you can place an NBA no-sweat same game parlay today. I think there's four games on the slate, but tomorrow when you're watching the Bulls, make sure you go over and place an NBA no-sweat same game parlay. You can place a three-leg same game parlay, uh, I think minimum odds of about two, minus 200, um, and if you place a $10 bet, you can get that bet back up. Uh, in uh, redeemed in bonus bets. So if you feel lucky, maybe it can hit a plus 500 parlay, and if not, you'll get your uh Wager back up to $10 in bonus bets. Also, college baseball has been fun to bet on. I'm on Cal State Fullerton Moneyline tonight. They're at home against Michigan. The Titans? The Is Titans. Correct? Yeah, yes. yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and then also, Cody and I talked to earlier today about uh, the MLB bets. They have a fun one for season specials. The White Sox, will they win uh, five and a half more games than the Cubs this year? Um, so, you know, think about that. Sox finished with 86, Cubs with 80. Let's see it happening. 86-81? I don't it's know. Tough. Yeah. I don't know if playing the AL Central and NL Central will hurt or help these teams more. I think that's one of my 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 int- my, uh, my questions that I'm I mean, more excited to a- see answered. A couple of the teams, yes. A couple of the teams, no, right? Yeah. Well, and I, too, <laughs> I do wonder, too, like, you know, we saw Kansas City, and the reason why Pedro Grafal got hired was because he knew how to scout the White Sox, you know? I mean, the White Sox didn't have a great chance against the Royals even when they weren't having the best of teams. The the Guardians consistently, you know, dominate the AL Central, and that's usually what helps them even when they're not spending a ton of money. Uh, maybe now not having to play the teams that will see a ton. Maybe the scouting reports are a little bit thinner, and talent wins out. That'd be good for the White Sox. We're in the middle of an ad rate. Download the app now and <laughs> sign up with the code CHGO. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, with code CHGO. Minimum agent eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Also got to let you know about Athletic Greens. Uh, Vinny's been traveling up and down, uh, went to Australia, I guess, last year. Uh, but our next partner has a product that I use literally every day. We started taking AG1s back 11 months ago because they were one of the first sponsors to be a part of CHGO. We're coming up on our first year anniversary. And, hey, I feel a lot better than I did a year ago because I've been taking Athletic Greens. I have more energy. I have better gut health. Um, and I have, you know, more time. I don't really have to worry about multivitamins, what I am taking, what I'm not taking. Athletic Greens gives me a nice little package, and all I have to do is put it in a cup of water. With one delicious scoop of AG1, I absorb 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, or superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help me start my day right. And it's less than $3 a day, so it's better than a cold brew habit. Um, it's lifestyle-friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. And Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No needs for millions of different pills and supplements to look out for your health. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash chgosocks. 
It's athleticgreens.com slash C-H-G-O-S-O-X to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank Just you. Just to finish it off, uh, Mike Rodolfo went to the Venezuelan Winter League, played there for a little bit, and then went to Fernando Tatis's Dominican League Winter League team, Estrellas Orientales. How do you and do? I didn't don't no stats on it, but what? he said current um, this is courtesy, This is quite the deep dive. Courtesy of Baseball America. Okay. So he's not on an actual team anywhere right now. So he's um, just chilling apparently. He did well, where did you have it? uh the uh, Aruga Tigres? Yeah. Uh he had uh one home run. Look at him. Hit 238, 261, 429. It's not good. No. <laughs> No, six. <laughs> this is very Mike Rodolfo of him. Six strikeouts, one walk. Um, let's talk about somebody who will be on the White Sox this year and likely will actually be wearing a White Sox uniform because he's been wearing one for two years. Andrew Vaughn. Uh, you got to chat with Andrew Vaughn. Weird way to kind of loop around to it, but hey, why not? We got there. Uh, Andrew Vaughn, um, I, I think it's very interesting uh, some of the things that they'll say here. Um, I don't know where I want to go with this. Uh, Andrew Vaughn, fun to talk to. Yeah, I think the I think the big <laughs> takeaway from me uh, or for me from what Vaughn had to say, both in the group setting and to me in this one on one interview during spring training, was uh, you know two years, two years where you get can't really make it to the finish line from a physical standpoint. Um, certainly, you can talk about his rookie year, year one, being hey, the most time I've ever most games I've ever played in a season. I mean, you remember this is a guy who didn't have a lot of minor league experience. So, I mean, bulk of his experience is in college compared to the minor leagues. And then he gets the major league baseball, 162-game season, and he just kind of runs out of juice. I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, amongst you guys, you know, was there an injury there? Did he get hurt kind of thing? The way he says it, it just he, he just got gassed at the end of the year. And I think the same thing happened to him last year. Uh, and, and remember, we were talking throughout the season – about him being one of those guys who was on alert by the team from the team with you know watch your legs take it easy don't get to a point where you are completely gassed at the end of the season and because he had to play outfield and run around in the outfield they couldn't prevent that and he he again kind of ran out of ran out of juice at the end of the year there moving to first base should help with that and and I think he doesn't want to necessarily admit that up front because he's a I'll do whatever the team says guy and so I get that but I think he, he after a while I even you know he says like yeah you don't you do different movements and at first base and it probably will will make for less wear and tear on the legs that will help with that but hey I think too this is just the guy I mean you got to run the bases you got to you got to run around this isn't just uh you know sitting in a, in a lawn chair over there at first base. So uh, he's got to learn how to get his body through a season, whether that he's playing first base, whether he's playing the outfield. He's a major league baseball player, and he needs to figure out how to do that, and he seems ready to figure out how to do that. Well, I do remember the question that I wanted to ask you, um, and it was just – you're both international men. Uh, I don't know yes. if we're going to be getting to that, but uh, he, he took a honeymoon, and uh, we, we've now you know can mark all the continents that all the, the CHGO White Sox and White Sox people have gone to, so we can mark Australia and South Africa. Yes, we both took extraordinarily long flights to our honeymoons <laughs> this uh, this winter, so we had that in common. So we were trading stories about that. Uh, uh, he, he brings it up on here, but uh, yeah, we got to talk a little bit more off camera about it too. Very nice. Uh, let's go here from Andrew Vaughn and Vinny in a very very sunny uh, Arizona. No, oh, all right. Uh, not found. All right. So, hey, maybe it exists somewhere uh, in the ether. We'll figure it out. Um, Technical difficulties are always yes. are always a possibility. You've left the country? I've, no, just Canada for 30 minutes. Okay. Well, that counts. You have any plans? Yeah, we're literally going to Canada again to <laughs> actually Toronto to watch the... Back to Canada. The, Make it official. The uh, Rogers Center and such. So, But here's the video from Andrew Vaughn. All right, wonderful. Uh, here is Vinny and... and Andrew, like I said, in a very sunny Arizona. Here with White Sox first baseman Andrew Vaughn. Andrew, uh, first few days of camp here. You guys are starting games soon. How how is camp been going so far for you? Yeah, camp's been really good. I mean, uh, the vibes are good. The guys are everybody's hungry, and uh, you know, big first game tomorrow. How's it been uh, with the new manager? Pedro uh, obviously has a presence here. What sort of uh, message? What sort of vibe has he kind of cultivated here uh, in the first few days of camp? Yeah, I mean, right away, it's uh, we're here to win. That's the goal. Um, do as much as we can. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of time to get to know each other, but I mean, I feel like we're already we're all clicking together. It's been nice. 
talk to, he talked to you guys during during the off season to you know shoot you some texts and stuff like that. A lot of guys said he's been communicating with mm-hmm. them for a while now. Yeah, soon. I mean, it was. I think it was right in the beginning of November. Um, I think he called probably everybody. He called me. Um, you know, we talked for five, ten minutes, introduced ourselves, and we stayed in touch the whole offseason. What's he expect from you guys? Work hard every day. Show up. Be that team that the team in the other dugouts looking at saying, these guys are they're here to play. It, it, I, I heard from one of your teammates saying he's kind of trying to bring the White Sox pride back. Do you, th- do you think that's accurate, and, and, and what is he trying to do in kind of in terms of kind of establishing a culture here? Yeah, I definitely see what he's saying. I, I think, uh, you know, last year's last year. Um, we want the fans to be in it. We want the fans to have a show every night. That's, I mean, we're technically the entertainment business, but we're out there doing a job, and, you know, we want to make it enjoyable for everybody around. How did the disappointment of last year kind of motivate you guys this offseason? You just got to look at it, understand what happened, move on from it. Learn to build, learn to grow, and you know, get ready for a full new season. Do you think you guys have learned? What What have you learned from last year? Yeah, you know, there were some things we definitely need to clean up. Um, sometimes we weren't clicking together. You know, um, it's baseball. It really is. Um, what we get this year to look forward to. When you look at yourself, uh, what are you expecting this year at the plate? What were maybe some of the things that you cleaned up and, and tried to work on this winter? Yeah, you know, I felt like a lot of times I was catching myself out front a little too much. You know, tried to go get the ball instead of letting the ball come to me. I mean, everybody's throwing pretty firm these days. Um, so, you know, just trying to stay within myself, drive the ball to the middle of the field and try to produce runs, get on base, and we score, we win. You've talked a lot, uh, you know, especially last spring coming off your rookie year about kind of the the toll that playing a full season took on you. And, and do you think it took a similar toll last year? Did you, did you find yourself maybe kind of uh, running out of gas a little bit at the end of the year? I th- yeah, a little bit. Um, definitely improved upon the year before. Um, still getting used to that 162, and I think last year kind of gave me the oomph. And I mean, my goal is to play all 162, and then however long we can go in the playoffs. And and what did you kind of learn from that moving forward? You know, are you have, are you confident in your ability to kind of get better? You know, go full full season in playoffs. I mean, are you going to be physically where you want to be? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of stamina. It's a lot of you know endurance with the body, with the legs. I was trying to do as much as I could, running, riding the bike, just getting ready for it. You're over at first base now. Do you think being out of the outfield will help with those legs? And, and do you think uh, what do you think the benefits are of maybe going over to first base, a, a position that you know very well, obviously? Uh, it's different movements. I mean, first is more lateral. In the outfield, you're, you're kind of full striding it a lot. Um, so I think there's definitely a difference there. And um, prepared myself, the mobility, the quick explosive stuff to just try to be ready. You were very willing to do whatever the team asked of you in terms of going out there in the outfield. But what do you like about getting back to first base? No, um, You know, I was an infielder my whole life. Um, people can look at baseball from the outside and be like, oh, moving position is pretty easy. It's pretty tough. You can ask a lot of guys, if you're an outfielder your whole life going to the infield, that's it's a, almost a totally different world, I feel like. What has this spring been like? Obviously, you have only known springs with Jose Abreu. Mm-hmm. A lot of folks here have only known springs with Jose Abreu. What has it been like this spring without him here? Yeah, you know, it's tough. Um you, everybody knows what he was this team. Um, phenomenal human being, came to sh- play every day. Um, we're sad he's gone, but now we got to face him opening day. So uh, now we got to beat him. What What did he mean to you? I, I know a few springs ago you were talking about you know him giving you some tips over at first base. Him, you know, even though he's so closely associated with those guys who who's his his locker was by and all that. Mm-hmm. What did he mean to you personally? Um, he was a great mentor. Um, wasn't a guy that used his words too much. To, to do his teaching. Um, he would a little bit, but he liked to kind of show you. He proved it on the field and did that every single day. And if you just watch him, you're like, huh, that's how you play 162 right there. Can you guys take, you know, anything from his example as a leader, even though he's not here anymore? Did you guys, do you guys feel like you learned so much from him that you can go forward without him now? Yeah, I think if everybody just played the game as hard as he does um, and strive to, which I know we all do, um, but just learn anything we can and, you know, push forward. How was your off season? It was good. Very good. Yeah? What would you do? Got married, took a honeymoon, and then got ready for the season. A good honeymoon destination? Where'd you go? Very good. South Africa. Ooh, very nice. So we, between the two of us, I was in Australia, as all our viewers know, uh, for my honeymoon. We covered a few continents. 
Yeah, that's uh, it's enough flying for a lifetime, I'll tell you that. I think I might agree with you there for sure. Uh, when you look around this clubhouse, what what do you see in terms of potential, in terms of what you guys can do? Obviously, you're always a confident bunch, but we heard from some of your teammates last year that the, that might have been a little overconfident last year. What do you see in terms of what this team can do in 2023? we got to go out uh, every day and play our best baseball. That's all i got to say. No, no projections, no nothing. Go out day one, play as hard as you can, and then – results of that game and then go to game two we've heard we've heard that you know pedro is kind of setting that tone that he's kind of saying you know it's it's great to to want to win the world series but there's so much you got to do beforehand is that kind of sinking in with you guys yeah i mean there's 30 of spring and then 162 before the playoffs even start so you gotta win game one all right i'm gonna give you a name of one of your teammates and you tell me what the first thing that comes to your mind is all right tim anderson plays the game so hard grinder Dylan Cease. <laughs> Slider. Just that's all that's all you need to know. All you need to know. Uh Luis Robert Jr. Freak. Aloy Jimenez. Homers. Homers. Yeah. Well, that that tracks. That tracks. Uh Lance Lynn. Oh, too many. Too many to think of. Um I'll just go, I call him Papa cuz he's such a leader. Okay. All right. And then last one. How about Liam Hendricks? Oh man, resilient. What does it What does it mean to see him around camp? It's phenomenal. Um, you know, when the news broke, he's very, very quiet. Him and his family, and they kept it to themselves. And he's he's a fighter, man. It's pretty awesome to see. He wants to be. He's out here throwing. I mean, the guy's got cancer. He's out here battling, proving that people can do it. He's an inspiration to a lot of people for it. I think that's the first time I've heard anybody describe Liam as quiet. Mm, yeah, it's personal stuff. Sorry yeah, to say sure. that, but yeah, personal matters. Um, he's definitely not quiet on the baseball field, but, you know, we're ready to get him back. Yeah, we are ready to get Liam Hendricks back. How many, How much did you see of Liam down there? Was it often? Was it sparingly? Uh, it was, yeah, not much. Um, it, he, he came in, it seemed like, after the other guys had kind of started going out to work. Um we our work area was in the press box at the at the stadium, which is next to the White Sox complex, and uh, so occasionally when we were up there, we'd see him throwing and playing catch, kind of down the right field line, um, you know, in kind of the position he normally works out before games during the regular season, um, you know, and and doing it out there. I mean, hey, like Andrew said, it's it's amazing that he's on the field. It's uh, it's it's not surprising that he wants to to work his way back from this as quickly as possible knowing him um but it remains amazing incredible inspirational take pick your adjective i loved all of his adjectives for every single homers and kind of mumbling homers just like hey (laughs) the way he said that sliders um yeah slider a a lot of good insight there i loved his uh answer on jose and you know jose set the example for how to play 162 games also, he didn't. Um, he never played 162. So well, he came damn close, much closer <laughs> than most players do. That's for sure. Played 60 though. Yes, he played the full 60. <laughs> um, but what do we think about the the whole 162? Because even there, he said it. Uh, you know, people think switching positions is easier than it looks in baseball, and it, it feels like he's a little like not a lot of talk about Andrew Vaughn playing the outfield in 2023. Seems like he's a first baseman. Yeah, he's 100 percent a first baseman. But 162 games for anyone is a tall ask. Firstly, I would want my players to be more fresh than that, so that's why I always used to say 140, 150. 162 is freak stuff. People don't do that anymore, especially because the grind of baseball doesn't it doesn't reward you after that. Like, playing 162, there's no, like, rhyme or reason for doing that. Oh, he plays all of the games. Uh, Who cares? D- Danzy Swanson got $175 because he played 162 games in Great. two seasons back-to-back. Congratulations to him. But, like, name me six other players who played 162 without looking it up. And it's like, oh, that's why they do it. You, it's a grind. You should have some rest. And this guy, you know, with his hitting off the walls his first two years, his uh, injury history, he should have some breaks. And, yeah, it's a good goal to have. And I want him to have that goal. But I want Pedro Gafal and the coaching staff to hold Bless himself you. back from himself. So, you know, 140 is plenty. Herb, that's that's what's hap- that's what's going to happen. Andrew Vaughn has a goal to play 162. That's terrific. It's from a physicality thing. It's a mentality thing. Uh, you know, they always talked about. You know, Tony La Russa would always make the joke that when uh, it came to giving Jose Abreu a day off, he he had to <laughs> physically wrestle him in order to uh, to do that. Uh, you know, 
Andrew Vaughn's not going to play 162 games because you're right. That's not how baseball works in 2023. Um, but as we talked about before we showed the interview, as Andrew has been talking about, there were some physical issues with, with him in terms of stamina and endurance the last couple of years. Um, so it's less about hitting, getting that number to show up on your, on the, as a great baseball cliche here, the back of your baseball card, um, and more about being in the physical condition to, pl- to play 162, mm-hmm. that you can play at as close to your peak as possible at the end of September the same way you could at the beginning of April. Yeah, and I do just want to say one thing to John real quick. Uh, man, He said, man, I know it's spring training, but I really hope this is a sign of things to come. Uh, the White Sox are one and two, um, so they, they did lose the first two games. But also, like, it's the whole reason why the it's this saying uh, spring hopes eternal or uh, what's it? Hope springs eternal. Oh, thank you. Um, you, you butchered it, it but you it was did the Jim Henry way. Yeah, <laughs> is that what he did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, spring hopes eternal. Yes. Uh, but it, it's 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 time for uh, for new thoughts. It's a it's a new year. It's a new slate, and Andrew Vaughn's been running and riding that bike, and you know he's going to be playing one sixty two. Um, I know it's being facetious at this point, but. Uh, how many, this is uh, White Sox players who have played 159 or more, that's Jose Abreu's most, uh, who has had the most seasons with under a, a White Sox uniform playing 159 games or more? In team history. In team history. Most number of seasons. Someone from the no, 1910s. No, 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 it's a real person. You'd get it's it. It's a real person. Yeah, you'd get it. It's a real person. <laughs> Ozzy Guillen. Well, because they, they didn't even play 162 back in the day. True enough. Um, yes. Ozzy is close. Ozzy's uh, one of the many two with two. Um, Ozzy in, I think, 86 and 90. Played one sixty. So how many players are there that have that more more than two seasons? One, one guy. One guy. One man. Ever. Ever. Ozzy in ninety and eighty six. This man, and I'm not giving out the years because it might give it away. It would give it away. I would have to be uh, probably like a two thousand five type of player. Is it Aaron Rowan? No, it's not Aaron <laughs> Rowan. <laughs> Definitely think bigger. Paul Canerco. No, Paul Konerko is not on this list. Um, the other two that are, or the other ones that are not the top guy, Mags did it in 01 and 03. Albert Bell played 163 in one of them, uh, 97 and 98. And then uh, Harold Baines, 90, uh, 82 and 85. One man did three, though. Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Frank Thomas. He's got all the records. Why wouldn't he have this one? Exactly. He's probably got some pitching records, Frank. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know which ones. Uh, 92, 98, and 2000. Uh, he played uh, 160, 160, and 159. So, um, I mean, maybe just first base is easier. I mean, we never sure. thought of Frank Thomas being a, a bastion of health. I mean, even I the mean, 2005 year, he only played 34 games. Playing, so, and DH is even easier. Yeah, I'm going to say 2000, he was more of a DH and should have won the MVP over Jason Jambi, but they gave it Jambi because he had a hot September. But yes, Frank Thomas is the White Sox guy, so I should have guessed that. At ninety in, in ninety two though, he played one hundred and fifty seven games at, at, at first base. He was twenty four, <laughs> terribly at first base. Oh. He was a terrible first baseman. That's that's a smart thing that they moved him to DH as quick as they did because I don't think his career could have lasted on, at first base. No, because he was such a butcher. Herb, he, he was, was eighth in MVP voting. Under, he was Frank Thomas. Understood. He was Dante bad. Bichette was in the major league uh, was in major league baseball. Bad. It's first base. You can be bad. Mm. You're gonna kick. For, you're saying Frank. Well, I Thomas. think the point is. I think the point is more. I agree with you, Sean. But the point more oh, no, so is yeah. you can be bad at defense and still hit. You know yes. what I like. Yes. It, and and you can still probably uh, you know put up MVP caliber offensive numbers uh, and just be bad at defense. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Frank, Frank Thomas in 1992. Uh, you know, bad at defense. Uh, also had a 975 OPS, which led the American yes. League. <laughs> that I, matters I, a lot more. I am not. There's 122 that, walks. That Frank is a, the best right-handed hitter I've ever seen in with my own own eyes but he was not a good defender at all you know the 363 that holes make so easy man yeah, hey hitting the people in the back of the head all the time going to second i'll say this right now even if andrew vaughn doesn't play 157 games at first base this year if he has 122 walks man you know i think i think he'll be fine i think his career will be all i right. will get an andrew vaughn <laughs> tattoo if he has 122 walks i i will probably get an that andrew vaughn tattoo happen. as well um 
I think this game's final. Yeah, White Sox get their first uh, spring training win. Yes. 10 to 1. Uh, well, let's take a quick break. We'll talk a little bit more about Andrew Vaughn. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more about spring training as well. We got some uh, Mailbag Monday questions as well. Got to let you know about game time. If you are looking to head to a White Sox game this year, the Bulls uh, are playing, uh, I think, the Raptors tomorrow in town. I keep. I, I don't know why I start ad reads. Um, no, they play in Toronto. So Herb can go to that later. Um, <laughs> and they played Detroit on Wednesday. We gotta yes. we gotta watch along with the boys at PB and J. Look at you with the plug. Um, yeah, so make sure you check out uh, at chgo underscore bulls for the link for that, or go to allchgo.com. Tis free. Come on out. Yeah, go check it out. It's in the Westwood, right? Free to get there. You got to pay for your own drinks. Right. We're not. We're not. We're not. Uh, what's it called? Put two dollars off of Buy the Blue Island, though. There you go. Nice. Uh, got the whole promo. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> Um, is he only in the commercial? In the middle of a different ad read. Exactly. It's not even <laughs> scheduled. Uh, yeah. Game time, though. Sorry, game time. They're the hottest new ticket excited out there. Uh, the Bulls next play in Chicago on Friday, March 3rd. Blacks, Blackhawks play next uh, on March 2nd. Mm. Quick turnaround there for the UC crew. Um, but game time is the hottest new ticket site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets, sports, concerts, and shows. Um, it, it just, you know, uh, if you're looking to head to a Green Day concert, maybe a Bruce Springsteen concert, U2 concert, uh, check out game time. If you ever dreamed of sitting in a seat and never thought you could 50 yard line court seat behind home plate maybe floor seats at a concert the biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you never thought you could buy game time was created by the fans for the fans and they guarantee the lowest price if you love chgo then you love game time the best way to support us is by buying your tickets to the link in the description join over 15 million people who download the game time app to score the best seats to all your favorite events all right let's get to the first um mailbag monday question here and it is from i believe ian rubbo and Indeed. he said have you guys seen anything different in the first two to three games so far that gives you hope? We all know the two infield blunders, uh, but no way Berger will be first baseman or even in the infield. Um, so at least this question, though, about the first two and three spring training games, what has stuck out or is anything really going to stick out? Should you be taking away anything from the Jake Berger two home runs? Insert Pedro Grafal comment here. Yeah. Sean, we talking about practice, as, uh, <laughs> as I always say. Uh, you know, I have made my uh, feelings on on uh, spring training games very clear. Yeah. Uh, and I, I let's put it this way: I thought it was interesting because I basically asked Pedro Grafol, "Hey, everybody back home in Chicago is going to be watching these games, and they're going to be looking at the stat lines all spring, and they're going to be like, well, that guy did good, and that guy did bad,' because I'm reading." The, the baseball reference, uh, you know, lines here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make my own 26-man roster based on the results of spring training, specifically the stats from Cactus League play. And I go, you guys you guys care about that? You guys, does the, do the White Sox care about that when you're making your decisions on how guys did and, and what you're looking for? Here's Pedro Grafol's answer to that question. Quote, I think the last thing we're going to look at are stats. That will be last on the list. I don't even think I'll look at that. We're going to look for energy, effort, details, fundamentals, controlling an at-bat, swinging at good pitches, not chasing, attacking the strike zone, PFPs, which Pedro loves. All the stuff we've been working on the first 10 days of spring training, that's how the evaluation process goes. Not only as an individual, but as a team. We'll address things as they come. Hopefully we can make a ton of mistakes so we can correct them before the season starts. Whether it's rules or fundamentals, whatever the case may be, missed cutoff guys, those are things I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. When there is a mistake made, we're going to come back here the next day and fix it. So nowhere in there did he say, we're looking to see who hits the most home runs. We're looking to see who has the lowest ERA. It, it, is, a, it is a very different thing you know, I'm sure all you guys turned the baseball game on today and watched it like you watch a regular season game because you love watching baseball, right? And I get it. But when it comes to gleaning things about what what the roster is going to look like and what the White Sox are going to look like starting on March 30th, the results in these games, they just, they just don't matter. Now, if you're seeing them make a ton of errors throughout the spring – probably not a good sign mm -hmm. you know if you're seeing them not doing those fundamental things that were such uh you know glaring problems a year ago mm -hmm. then yeah that's probably not a good sign but if you're like well uh you know bubble roster player x uh ha is batting 400 this spring it must mean he's gonna win the mvp you know i, I don't think the white Sox are looking at that any I don't think they're looking at things anything close to that. Well, and even and Pedro said so. Yeah, and Pedro also said after the game on Saturday, um, 
like I said, from day one, I want to see mistakes. So even the Jake Berger blunders that Ian brings up, like, you know, he, he's got two mistakes and two home runs. Like, the Ramos the, drop on the pop fly. Right. Like that, he, They're probably like, oh, that's awesome. Yes, yeah. let's, 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 let's correct it. Let's, it's a teaching we, moment. We've yeah. seen so many times with White Sox messing up that play in particular. And so, yeah, he can go in there and say, this is how we at the White Sox are going to do that play from here and see what, 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 what we're wrong, we'll go over the tape, and then fix it. And that's a good thing to have. And results of these, and I'm, I'm sure Ian knows this and everybody who's listening and watching knows that these results don't matter. No one cares about your, your spring training results. At the end of the at the end of this month, no, or at the end of March, no one's like, man, this month out oh, here, six sixty seven, man, let's go, Jake, Zach Rimmelar needs to make that team, let's yeah. go, right, and Jake Berger too. I mean, the two home runs he had were off of, uh, and I might butcher this name, uh, Nick Maravicious uh, from he's, he's a major uh, leaguer, the Mariners. Uh, yeah, he's got a six twelve uh, ERA in his major league career, and then uh, Michael Baez uh, of your Padres, uh, three fifty seven ERA in his career. Um, you know, they're they're guys, but they're not like. And it's not like he's homering off Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer. And, like, even, but, and even if he did. Right. Yeah, like, you right. know, I know, but it's just, but like, again, like it's you just can't read the stat line and say, oh, this guy is going to be, you know, the, on, the, on the 26-man roster well, and because I'll, of and I'll, and I'll tell people this, too. I know while I, last week when, when, I, when I tweeted out video of that pop-up drill and everybody went gaga for it and you guys were talking about it on the show, you know, people love to see that. Well, guess what? They're still practicing. They're just doing it in games now. And so there's going to be there's going to be situations where the pop up goes up and they're going to have to figure out who calls for it and they might get it right and they might get it wrong but it's the same it's the same uh, stage of preparation for the season than that video of them doing drills a week ago was you know what I mean when they're when it's when they're practicing throwing to the cutoff man on a backfield with a off of a fungo bat you just fast forward two or three days and they're practicing it in the field. It just happens to be coming off the bat of a live action game. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, and I think like yesterday, you saw Jimmy Lambert give up two rocket home runs to Hunter Renfro and to Anthony Rendon. I think he's getting working. I don't think you know those are two good hitters. But also, don't worry about Jimmy Lambert in the spring training in the light air of Arizona. If he gives up two home runs to those two great players, God bless. And it's in spring training. Get your work in. Get out of the game. I'm sure he would not. Prefer to give up home runs, but also we would prefer not to give up walks. Just get your work in, get the results, get healthy, go to Houston. Yep. That's all we should care about. Um, we got both a Super Chat and a Mailbag Monday question. Um, well, I guess this one's more of a Super Chat and a comment. Uh, Stefan Bardo uh, with the Super Chat. Thank you very much. Um, watching these guys go from first to third is great. Um, again, maybe uh, more emphasis from Pedro to fall on this. I saw Elvis Andres just hustling. Love seeing him run. Uh, he got a triple today. Uh, that was great to see. Um, I don't know. Think it, has anything stuck out to you base running wise or no? Yaz had a great defensive play today. Uh, ball got away from him. And he and threw him threw out. Threw out a second. That yeah. was nice. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't really care necessarily. It's good to see home runs. It's good to see results being 10-1. to 1, But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I like just – seeing the baseball. I remember I told you on Saturday, I was like, man, I'm hyped for this game for no reason. Second inning, I was like, damn, this is spring training baseball. And I watched that some bitch all the way through the ninth inning just for shits and giggles, but I wasn't entertained by the game. I wasn't taking this in as, oh, man, this is going to be what the White Sox are. All it is right now for me is just making sure these players are healthy and doing what they should and necessary. Like Vinny said, to be a better team, defensively especially, and Pedro's nipping stuff in the bud that was left unanswered or just better that he can see, like, this team didn't focus last year or this team, this team didn't uh, bring it all the time and he's getting that instilled in the culture, that's what I want. I don't care about the injuries. I mean, I don't care about the, the hitting. I don't care about the home runs getting hit by other teams. doesn't matter. What I, what I tell you before I left, Herb, hmm. You see those pictures of the green grass. Mm. All of a sudden, you go from negative to positive real mm -hmm. quick. <laughs> Not you, just you. What right. baseball Me fans in baseball. general, right? A it goes a from royal you. it goes it goes from uh, a, a miserable winter to a hopeful spring at the at the flick of a switch, just like that. Uh, I'm just reminded of what Matt Spiegel, how Matt used Spiegel used to say, baseball, baseball. <laughs> like you know, it's just you know, it's it's, it's perfect. Oh, uh, ethereal and stuff. We got one final question here from our diehard Discord, and if you do want to. Be a part of our Mailbag Mondays. Check out allchgo.com. We are closing in on our first year anniversary here at All CHGO. Um, if you signed up when we first launched, um, if you 
re-sign up again, you will get another free T-shirt. Um, you will get the whole uh, kit and caboodle again. You know, I, I don't know if you'll get the the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, I, I don't think you'll get another membership card because you bang a bang bang. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you'll you'll, you'll get the other. Uh, free t-shirt and we're, we're excited to have you back for another year of bigger and better things uh, for CHGO. But if you do want to become a part of our community, we got the CHGO lounge. Uh, we're able to talk to us and we got uh, some spring trader chatter uh, that actually took over more of the discord today than the mailbag Monday. Uh, now, you know, you know, it's got, you got two people hey, for the mailbag Monday, but Sean, Jake Berger got everything. This is just in <laughs> people like baseball. People do like baseball. Um, <laughs> Husky Bardo saying, uh, just more of a baseball question. What does Otani's contract look like? Uh, $500 million or more. Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes is a $500 million man in the NHL. Uh, largest contract. The NFL as well. What did I say? NHL. NHL. Oh. They bring design. him back to the Kansas City Scouts? I don't, <laughs> I don't think Patrick Mahomes is in the uh, I'm sure he'll do well. He's probably definitely the tallest person in the NHL. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, he, uh, but what? Oh, go ahead. Otani's contract, you saw Manny Machado reportedly sign an extension for $350 million. He's 31, going to be 31, age 31 season. Otani's going to be 29 in his free agent season. He already is just as good as a hitter, if not better, than Manny Machado, right? Can we, can we agree on that? Yeah. At that point, like I would say that the other teams would be hesitant to give $500 million just because at the end of that contract, he probably won't be a pitcher. That's what I would think. But... If there's teams bidding, like I think there's going to be multiple teams bidding, five hundred million will be the base, will be the bottom of that contract because he's got so many years to go. And if he's playing two ways for at least five of those years of a ten-year contract, it's well worth it. Uh, Trout, largest contract in history, four twenty-six. He signed that when he was twenty-seven. Otani will be twenty-nine uh, on July fifth. Um, I mean, do you think it will go over five hundred million? Do you think we'll we'll see that number? You are getting two players and they are both of MVP caliber top 10 <laughs> you're getting two you're getting one of the best hitters in baseball and one of the best pitchers in baseball you're getting them both so there is there is no precedent there's no precedent Mike Trout who has the biggest contract ever and might be the best baseball player of all time that might be true right. correct uh Shohei Otani is two baseball players <laughs> and you, so you can't you can't even compare it. Think of what think of the annual value or the contracts that's been given out to guys like Verlander and Scherzer and other top pitchers. You see Garrett Cole's contract, right? Then think of Manny Machado's contract or Mike Trout's contract. How could anyone in their in their in any owner in their right mind argue that Shohei De Otani deserves less than any of those guys because he's Two of them in one in one person. Uh, think of the most ridiculous amount of money you probably ever thought a baseball player would get. He is going to go well north of that. Is any team like in play for him, or is it only the Mets, Mets, Yankees, the Mets, and Angels? Do you see what the Padres done? I don't know how they're getting the money. I don't give a goddamn. They're spending money hand over fist. These people have money. They're telling you all the time that they have money. The Angels have money. Artem Moreno decided he didn't want to sell a team. He still has money. All these teams can theoretically sign because it's only fifty million a year. In only, the, yeah, only. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. You're not like you don't pay the five hundred million immediately. You get fifty million. You know, it's a lot of money. But in the grand scheme, as Vinny says, he's a top five pitcher. Yeah, top mm. ten hitter. What do you pay individually for both of those guys? Right. All, and yeah. then put them together. You'd pay $300 million for one of them. And so there you go. Combine them. There you go. $600 yeah. million, 650 yeah. Why not? White Sox Tom says five fifty. dollars um, it, It's possible. I, I, I would should. say it's definitely over five hundred. And you're paying him, yes, for the, what he's going to do. And that's what the only hesitancy I would have is just the pitching part. Where is he going to stop pitching? Because that's probably going to happen. And where is he going to stop being effective as a pitcher? Is a hitting thing that's going to be forever that's going to be until he's at least 30s in his mid 30s so you're getting a great player even if he has a tommy john you've seen that with uh bryce harper he just dh'd so i think you're gonna get a prime player no matter what yeah absolutely i mean even if he doesn't pitch he's he's really damn good at hitting <laughs> it's like really? and then if you just put all of his effort and focus on hitting he might be like 
the basket hitting. Kevin Wells Cubs wants to have them, but Great the owner's like, oh, I don't like the money. I'm biblical losses. Yeah, I muted well, that term on, on Twitter. I don't need to hear that from, from that person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're calling me about biblical. You, you own a major league baseball team, and it's the Cubs. Like, yeah. It's not like you're the, exactly. the Pirates. Like, I'm so sorry that, that business is so bad in Chicago with your 12 million people your uh, readily stadium. available around to your, your, your second most highest priced uh, baseball team. Your tickets. national land. Mark, you clown. Yeah, I'd be Cody level excited if the Cubs were even mentioned as a possibility of a landing spot for Otani. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourselves. I, no, I, unless I, unless it's signed on the line, take it from somebody who signed Manny Machado's brother-in-law, his best friend. <laughs> yeah, um, you bro- did that. I know how it goes here in this city. I was behind that. I'm just um, saying, I would get to that level. That's a bad be, you know. choice by you. You shouldn't have done that. You should have yeah. signed Manny. I should have just signed <laughs> Manny. I should have just gave him that 25 million dollar more. Uh, uh, he wouldn't even take it in the full. To go play for your like park district team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he wouldn't even take in the full thing. He would have opted out, and you know, I would have had to try to get him for 350, Perfect. and I wouldn't have been able to afford it. Uh, and I told San Diego at the time when he signed, I'm like, you'll be, you want him to opt out after five years. Right. That, cause that means he believes in his talent and he still has some money not left on the table and he did the right thing and they are going to break him off 11 years. I don't, you know, I don't like the last part of that, that deal. But I'm not the San Diego Padres. They're going to get the front part of that deal and try to win a championship. Yeah, they would like first ring in team history. I don't, I don't yeah. think they care. They care how, how they get. If that it. happens, I think no one in San Diego would be like, oh, he spent all that money on that guy and Xander Bogarts. Like, we got a championship. I don't give a goddamn. Right. Same thing with Jason Hayward and the Cubs. Well, there's a certain guy on that team that has a contract that, oh, you know, Jesus got to live up to it in 14 Tatis. years. Th- th- 13 more in one year he just didn't play. Yeah, <laughs> got to get off those <laughs> motorcycles. Um, anyways, that's going to do it for the CHGO White Sox podcast. I'm Shy Anderson. You got to follow me on Twitter. Or you can follow me on Twitter. No, nope, you um, got to follow him. You got to follow him. Uh, You're listening, you got to follow him. It's a requirement. It's not that important. <laughs> at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Uh, that's Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. You can follow him on Twitter at Sean. or Nope, at Vinny Duber. Uh, and that's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter at, at Sean underscore <laughs> W underscore Aaron Anderson. at Eckner all 23 no. he's our CHGO White Sox community leader thank you to Kevin Wells for producing the show and thank you to all of you for uh, hanging out with us in the chat and f- feel free to uh, hit the like button on your way out we'll talk to you tomorrow more White Sox talk